G12 core value number eight is I love training and equipping. And training and equipping is our happy hour. Tend to your spiritual growth and take advantage of training, equipping and mentorings. Whether it be from our network mentorings, G12 mentorings, and even life class and school of leaders equipping track, we have been given the greatest opportunities to be trained and equipped for the furtherance of God's kingdom. So be compelled to level up in your faith. Elevate in your life with Christ. Be part of the training process. And release your leadership potential. Join the network mentoring with our very own Pastor Godofredo Ambat. This will happen monthly from 6pm along with all our network churches. The presence of God will be so strong that my brothers and my sisters, when we go there, we are expected to work well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another way we can be further mentored and trained is through the G12 Mentorings with Bishop Oriel Baliano of G12 Philippines. To do this, to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill all the principle of authority, we have to align. Uh, you will prepare the word. You have to obey the authority. And of course, we are also privileged and blessed to have our monthly G12 UK leaders meeting and mentoring with Pastor Cesar Castellanos of MCI Bogota, Colombia. I pray that God will give you an anointing for multiplication where you could experience supernatural reproduction in all that the Lord has entrusted you. To stay updated with all these new mentorings, head on over to our Instagram and Facebook page and follow us for all the announcements and further details. Part of our happy hour is also the life class and school of leaders equipping track where we witness precious souls level up in the ladder of success. As we have transitioned to the digital platform, let us remain unstoppable for Jesus. So as we go through the process of winning, consolidating, discipling and sending, we'd love for you to join the journey too. Our life class and school of leaders are every weekend where you can learn the Word of God, virtually interact with fellow students through activities, be equipped in discipleship and be developed into a leader of leaders. to let you know that a new life class batch will be coming soon so if you're interested contact your cell leader or the person that invited you we, we believe that the, the best, best is yet to come it is very important that we should be equipped in everything that we do especially in evangelizing to other people he commanded us and gave us authority to make disciples this is our mission now. We do this out of love. That we in the leadership, in the life class, in the equipping process, that all of us, we will let our Lord Jesus Christ to reign in our lives. Because there is a work to do. There is a job to specifically do. But my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is telling us, if you do this, when you go, preach your lives, your gospel lives, win them, baptizing them, the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey the promise of God. I will be with you until the end of the ages.
Hello and blessed evening to all of you, my brothers and my sisters who are students of the Word. Welcome to Pagasa Center Bible Study Night. And tonight we will be led and facilitated by Brother Ken Camposano and he will continue the book of Philippians chapter 3. And I pray to God that you will really be open and to receive the Word of God, that it will change our lives, it will promote us in our levels of faith. So to all of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. And I promise you, the Word of God, as it is in the Bible, it says that it is alive and powerful. Once our hearts are open, it will work. The Word of God will definitely will work and it is for our benefit and so i urge you focus take note and again after this bible study night then you can go to the book of philippians study by your own and definitely something beautiful will happen in your lives and so thank god that we have bible study in pagasa center so let's take advantage of this let us pray. Oh God, our Father, we continue to honor you, we worship you, we adore you. We declare that you alone is God. You are the creator of all things, the owner of all things, the sustainer of all things. That by your word, all things have been created. That tonight, Lord, this Bible study, we ask, O oh Holy Spirit, that may you continue to work in our lives that you strengthen us in our inner being that our faith will grow even more and that our knowledge of our lord jesus christ will increase and lord help us as we learn and as we understand that we will be going for the purpose why you called us and saved us that lord our nourishment coming from your word will lead us to maturity so that we can be fruitful and that our fruits will last and so god we thank you for tonight we continue to ask O oh holy spirit that you move among us tonight again thank you in jesus christ's name amen let's worship the lord Let's join the music team. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Hello, uh, good evening everyone. My name is Brother Ken Camposano and I'm one of the primary leaders of uh, uh, Pastor Doc Ambat uh, in Pagasa Center. And I want to welcome you uh, in our tonight's uh, Bible study night. Uh, especially, I want to welcome those who are here for the first time. Welcome. Uh, I hope that uh, you'll stay through the end and learn uh, about the Word of God. Before anything, I want to take this opportunity again, of course, to honor my leaders, Pastor Brother Fred Ambat and Pastor Shirley Ambat, for giving me this uh, privilege or uh, this privilege to be able to teach the word again tonight. And also, I want to honor and acknowledge our uh, pastors, uh, Pastor Gosh, and Pastor uh, Benfor, and Pastor Doris Nadarata from uh, Pagas Center Ireland, and Pastor Alan Bakani in Pagasa Center Philippines. So as I've mentioned a while ago, it has always been a privilege for me to teach about uh, the Word of God. So, um, and I believe, uh, especially for those people who are here for the first time, God is going to do something wonderful in your lives. So for tonight, I want to challenge you to you know, open up your hearts, open up your mind, just remove any restrictions um, in, in, in you know in your hearts and your minds just let the word of God and then let God work in your life so before we start I uh, want to invite us all to pray so let's pray uh, dear heavenly father we glorify your name for who you are for you are good you are faithful and there is no one like you Lord we humble ourselves in your presence as we ask for forgiveness for the sins, Lord, that we have committed against your name. Lord, I claim your promise in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess to you our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us, to cleanse us from any unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of forgiveness. And we thank you, Lord, for this time again tonight that we are able to study your word. It's about what really matters. And I pray, O Lord, God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that double portion of your anointing uh, be upon me as a speaker continue to use me uh, as a mouthpiece uh, be able to deliver your word tonight to the people Lord um, I pray Lord God 
especially for for the people, especially for the first timers. Pray, O Lord God, that uh, as they open up their minds, their hearts, and their lives, O Lord God, there is this wonderful thing that will happen. Pray that you will move in us. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, uh, just as a quick recap, last week, uh, we have covered the first part of the uh, chapter 3 of the book of Philippians. And of course, if you remember, this was all about um, what really matters. What really matters about knowing Christ. So just as a quick recap from last week, everything uh, that we may consider valuable, such as our deeds, our achievements, legacy, are all rubbish compared to gaining Christ. Okay, we remember that. Number two also, the righteousness that comes from the law is dependent on our effort. So it is all about works and we tend to fail on that part. While the righteousness of God is conferred upon us in, a, in response to our faith in Jesus. Amen. And we have been declared righteous because of Jesus. So if you, if you are glad, if you are joyful that God has declared you righteous because of our faith in Jesus Christ, type Amen down below. Number four is knowing Christ is about knowing first is the power of His resurrection, fellowship of His suffering, being conformed to His death, and that the resurrection would be the main highlight of our Christian life. And tonight, we're going to look at the three main topics of three main remaining topics of this book, Philippians, uh, which is uh, uh, second topic was the price of the high calling. Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Uh, third topic is the conduct consistent with commitment. Philippians 3, 15 to 16. Number four, judgment, which is in Philippians 3, 7 to 9. So let's now look at uh, our uh, topics and the main points. So the second topic of this book, which is our first topic for tonight, is all about the price of the high calling. Can you type it in the chat box below? The price of the high calling. And we will read Philippians 3, 12 to 14. So I'll read Philippians 3, 12 to 14 in NKJV version. It says, Not that I have already attained, or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid off me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, 12, 14 and KJV word. So the price of the high calling of God is also what really matters as what uh, Paul says. So the price of a vital faith is a continuous struggle and the quest is enduring and eternal. And God has created us so that we can grow. Yeah, Can you say it with me? I have been created by God to grow. Okay? When we have been born again, Jesus recreated us so that we can grow. Yeah, Also, not to grow, not just to grow, but to also become the new creation that we are in Christ Jesus. Remember in 2 Corinthians 5.17, that those who are in Christ, they are, they are a new creation. So, uh, we're going to look at um, uh, four uh, main points for this first topic for uh, tonight. Um, so Paul sets out in his word uh, that pressing toward the goal for the price of the high calling. Okay, So he's pressing about that price of the high calling. And here we're going to look at the first main point, is, which is all about recognize who and where we are. Can you say it with me? Recognize who? And where we are. So first is we have to recognize who and where we are. And in Philippians 3.12, it says, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold. That for which Christ Jesus has also laid off in Philippians 3.12. So Paul has passionately set before us what really matters, the guiding purpose of his life and that of all Christians, which is about knowing Christ. Knowing Christ was about renouncing everything less worthy compared to gaining Christ. So Paul 
now uh, with his word that he used, he's put a disclaimer. It says here that not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected. Yeah, so that was his disclaimer. Because Paul was well aware how far the possible glory God had in store for all Christians. So he has used this for the people of Philippi that thinks that they have already arrived at perfection or achieved perfection. Because uh, he made this disclaimer because there was a group of people in the church of Philippi that regarded their baptism as an initiation state of perfection to which nothing needed to be added. Okay? This means that they think that they, ha- they are already perfect. That they are already like God. And but the message of Paul here is clear. That the Christian life is a journey. Can you re- can you type it in the chat box below? Christian life is a journey. Or repeat this with me. Okay, this is a process of growth in which we seek to lay hold of the fullness of that which has been given to us. Okay, so that is in verse uh, 12 that what we read a while ago. I think verse 12, yet, yeah, which is about that for which Christ Jesus has also laid on. So we are Christians. So we must now become. What we are. Yeah, we have been saved. Now we have to work our salvation with fear and tre- trembling. It is a daily process. And we have to strive to become perfect each day. Because for us, our heavenly father is okay? We have been saved. And now we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We are not yet perfect. But we are in the process of perfection. Okay? It's a daily process. And that is what we have to achieve every day here is we are caught in a tension because we live in the now as those we have died with christ to sin yet we are still sinners let me repeat that we are caught in a tension because we live in the now as those we have died with christ to sin yet we are still called sinners we have been declared by god as righteous and has accepted us through our faith in jesus christ yet we are still in fact unrighteous And any claim that we make to righteousness is just considered filthy. Yeah. Right? That is the set tension that Paul is talking about. Yeah, but this tension is a creative one. We are drawn by a powerful impulsion of a personal relationship with Christ. And this impulsion, yeah, the impulsion of this love, makes it necessary for us to be and to become what we are. And that is a new person in Christ. So every day, We begin uh, where we are, claiming boldly and confidently that Christ has made us as a new creation. But we also need to confess humbly that we have not become in fullness what Christ wants us to be. So there's always the need of dependency in God because, or in Christ because we have not become the fullness of Christ uh, wants us to be, which is uh, becoming a new person, okay? be a new person. There are two things that we tend to operate, which is both weakening our Christian growth and service. First is false humility, which refuses to name and claim our gifts. And second, overconfidence, where we claim too much for ourselves and now we don't depend enough on the power of Christ. So in this, Paul calls a balance. Can you say it with me? Balance. Yeah, balance in these two in this verse in Philippians 3.12. We are basically, uh, I like the illustration that they've used here. Uh, We are basically walking on a tight rope of naming and claiming our gifts and struggling against the deep hold pride has on our heart and the tendency to fall into self-justification. Yeah, we make no claim to perfection, but we have an unshakable confidence that Christ Jesus has made us his own. And they repeat that we make claim We make no claim to perfection, yet we have an unshakable confidence that Christ Jesus has made us in His own. So acknowledging who and where we are is essential at every step along the way to the price of the I. Amen. So uh, the second main, main point is all about leaving the past behind. So leaving the past behind is essential. Is an essential step okay, along the way to the price of the high calling. Can you say it with me or type in the chat box below? Leave the past behind. 
So every day we must leave the past behind. What happened tomorrow? Let uh, what happened yesterday. Let us leave that behind. Okay. Um, so I will just read uh, a, a quotation uh, from or uh, an excerpt from Dog Hammerhold. So because from the time of saying yes to call, Dog Hammerhold was certain had meaning and this life in surrender had the goal. He concluded that from that moment, I have known what it means not to look back and to not have a note thought of tomorrow. So we Christians have been uniquely equipped so that we can leave the past. So let me repeat that. We have been uniquely equipped yeah, to leave the past behind because we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have the ability to do that. Okay? So we should leave the past behind. But sadly, many of us, many of Christians still cannot leave the past behind. They are still living in the past. Okay? That's why they cannot move forward. Their past continue to dra drag them back, uh, weigh them down, and make their movements stumble. Okay? They still have the guilt over their past sin, and they still have pain from their heart, uh, from their hurts, from their past hurts. Okay? And this contradicts actually to everything that we confess about, about the power of God, his healing, his forgiveness, and his redemption. Okay, his redeeming power. This is actually contradicts uh, to everything that we confess. If we are still li uh, living in the past, yeah, if we have not let go or have not left the, uh, the past behind. So the past will always be with us. Yeah, it can rob us of our freedom, make us heavy hearted, uh, prevent us from being able to use all the energy, the efforts and the gifts so that we can live this new life in Christ and to move forward. So the past sins that we have already confessed have already been forgiven by God. Okay, The past hurts that you have already surrendered by God, I believe he is in the process of healing you. Okay, so if you are leaving your past behind, type it in the top, the chat box below. Okay, type it. I am leaving my past behind. Okay, let us leave our guilt, yeah, over past sin. Let us leave our pain from past hurt. Okay. So main point number three, uh, have a goal. So as we have quoted a while ago from Doug uh, Hammerhold, he said to take no thought of tomorrow. But this does not mean that we will not have any aims in life or we will not have goals towards which we are moving. But rather this means that the focus of life is in here and now. Okay, And our energy is spent in living to the fullness, the life that Christ gave us today or gives us today. A part of that energy for present investment comes from the divine purpose of life. Paul says in verse 14, I press toward the goal. So I'll read um, a story uh, uh, from this book uh, about this minister friend of uh, uh, this, the author. Um, his name is Don Shelby. Uh, so he recalled an incident out of the illustrious life of Winston Churchill, which underscores, underscores the need for a goal. It was critical in the days of World War II and England faced the need for increase of production. The Prime Minister called a meeting of labor leaders to give them the facts and enlist their support in his inimitable way of using imagination and power oratory. He closed his presentation by picturing in their mind a parade which would surely be held in Piccadilly Circus after the war is over. There would come the men of the Royal Navy whom everyone would know had kept the vital sea lanes open. There would pass the army who had come home from Dunkirk and then gone on to defeat Rommel in Africa and fight under Montgomery in Berlin. There would come the Air Force who had driven the Luftwaffe out of the sky and beat it at its own game. Then he said last of all, there would come a great host of sweat-stained, suit-streaked miners Someone would cry from the crowd, where were you? And from the 10,000 throats would come the answer. We were deep in the earth with our faces against the pole. Winston Churchill sat down to a wildly cheering throng. 
many with tears running down their cheeks. So the man at the top had shown the power of a purpose, the need for a goal, how everyone working together would win victory. So in our lives, of course, as we um, we should have, as we progress in life, as we live as a new creation, we should have a goal. Okay? Can you type in the chat box below? I would have a goal. So let us not run the race aimlessly. Okay? Let us have a goal. Let us have something that we will be aiming to do. Okay? And then um, main point number four is concentrate on the path. So there is no question about the energy that is produced by a driving passion and the likelihood of our achieving what we set our hearts to. Okay? We have to concentrate, con concentrate yeah, on the path. So in other words, we need to choose our goals wisely. Okay? Let us not just make goals, but rather let us choose goals wisely. This suggests another piece in the pattern of what really matters, okay? As we seek the prize of the high calling of God. Concentrate on the path, run the race with your eyes on the course, and put attention to your presence there. And then in this entire passage, Paul was combating with his self-satisfaction, okay? So we have talked about leaving the past behind. Therefore, we also need to actually leave behind our past achievements and even our failures. Okay, so let me repeat that. We also need to leave behind our achievements and our failures. So in the race of life, we concentrate on the path and we forget about as what well, as we run. Okay? We may store our achievements in our memory, but let us now allow it to slow us in our present running. So it's a, a, a story again, an excerpt a story of this book. It says, I had the exhilarating joy of seeing Eric Hayden we win two of his five gold medals in ice skating at the Winter Olympics in, in, in Lake Placid in 1980. I have never witnessed anything quite like it. Through his skin-tight gold suit, one could see the rippling movement of the muscles, especially in his legs, as he made his laps before me. Straining and stretching toward the final mark, his posture was that of perfect balance gliding swiftly over the ice and it was as though he was so eager to reach his final goal and that he was trying to touch it from his present position well past laps did not matter the laps the laps that remained in the goal ahead was everything that was an amazing story about um achieving or setting a goal okay don't forget that the goal of the christian race is the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And this is not just about any calls, uh, calls that come to us along the way. Uh, the summons to duty here and the unselfish uh, service there. But rather, this is about the perfect happiness and joy to which God summons us. This is a heavenly call in Hebrews 3.1. It says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, as Jesus in verse 31. It was that call, yeah, it was the call, uh, it was the same call that called Paul on the way, on the road to Damascus. And that call never stopped to summon him forward. So let's now look at the third uh, topic of this book, which is conduct consistent with commitment. Can you repeat that with me? Con conduct consistent with commitment. And that is in Philippians 3, 15 to 16. Let us read that. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, Therefore, let us, as many of us are mature and have this in mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us off be the same mind. Philippians 3, 15, 15 to 16. So Paul now calls for conduct consistent with commitment. The level of our spirituality and the practical way we live should be in the same level. Okay, does that make sense? Let me repeat that. The level of our spirituality and the level of our practical way we live 
should be on the same level. And that is what verse 16 means. Okay? So, it cannot be that our spiritual aspect is on the same level. It's, it's not on the same level as our practical aspect. Okay? So, as our spiritual aspect mature, but also our conduct also mature. Okay? That is the essential discipline of Christian growth. Okay? The, the, the essential discipline in Christian growth is that we learn to say yes. Yeah, we say yes to Christ in all the aspects of our lives every day. And because of that, as we say yes, we we are transitioning or we are in the process. We are being processed to becoming the new creation of Jesus and being perfect. And why do we say yes? It's because Jesus does not force himself, himself upon us. Yeah, our consent is necessary so that he can act and transform our lives. He comes to us and abides in us as we yes say yes to him. He does not take command against our will. He works in us according to our obedient response to him. That is why we need to have a daily response of yes. So are you ready to say yes every day to Jesus Christ in all aspects of your life? Okay. And you can type in the chat box below. Amen. New occasions demand new duties and new situations call for new responses. So let me read uh, uh, something that um, John Wesley uh, wrote. So John Wesley was turned around by Christ in the experience at Aldersgate. And he could say, I felt my heart strangely warm. I felt I did trust Christ. Trust him for my salvation. Eight months later, this is what he wrote in his journal. My friends, affirm I am not because I said I was not a Christian a year ago. I affirm that I am not a Christian now. For a Christian is one who has love, peace, joy. But these I do not have. Though I have given and do give all my goods to feed the poor, I am not a Christian. Though I have endured hardship, though I have in all things denied myself and taken up the cross, I am not a Christian. My works are nothing. I have not the fruits of Christ. Though I have constantly used all the means of grace for 20 years, I am not a Christian. So we may find it difficult that the way Mr. John Wesley makes the case And the way he uses the word Christian, he's saying that he's not Christian. But we must not miss the point. He is actually wrestling with himself. Just like how Paul wrestled with himself in Romans 7, 18. It says here, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not. And we can say, of course, that John Wesley is a Christian. There's no doubt about it. Because he had been laid hold of by Christ. Amen. But like Paul, he would make no claim that he have or he has attained the fullness of what he knew was his by gift and promise. Okay. So this should be our stance as Christians, as disciples. To be aware of what is yet lacking in our process of being perfect. Hey, let me repeat that. This should be our stance. To be aware of what is yet lacking in our life. In our process of being perfect. And let us press on as it says in Philippians 3.12. Press on to lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold. Okay. That is uh, the main point or topic number three. And now we are on our last topic. Uh, topic number four which is about judgment. Philippians 3, 7 to 9, 17 to 9. So let me read, uh, let me read that in Philippians 3, 7, 19, King James Version. Brethren, join in the following of my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. 
Philippians 3.17. So in this passage, Paul actually used himself as an example. And those who do this, yeah, who use themselves as an example, actually becomes vulnerable and setting themselves up to failure. Yeah, they tend to become, you know, vulnerable and they set themselves up for failure. And if you use yourself as an example, one has to be extremely arrogant or transparently humble to project oneself as uh, as a model. Okay, so that that was not really an easy task uh, for Paul using himself as an example. Okay, because the world, yeah, the world is full of the arrogant who sends the message, "I have arrived. You would well to follow me." So this is what uh, mo- modern advertisement schemes use. Okay? And why do you think they use um, superstars and super successful people as the models of their brands or any commodity? It's because they want us to think that if we use the same commodity, uh, like these superstars or these super successful people, that you know we will be like them. Yeah. So that is what they use the modern advertisements, and also uh, we will also find it rare that someone is calling people to imitate humility okay so in verse 12 uh, of philippians 3 paul already have confessed his limitation he said that not that i have already attained this that is i have not already been perfected but he said he has not been perfected yet and also in verse 18 his deep feelings are captured in his words it says for many live about whom i have often told you and now with tears, I tell you that they are the enemies of the cross. So here he is pleading that for the people actually to follow him, not in his failures, not in his limitation, not even in his achievements, but in what really matters. And that is being laid, being laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Okay, So not to be responsive to that and not to press on to obtain the prize of the high calling, actually has a serious concern okay that is why paul actually makes a statement about judgment and he provides a quite scary description of what kind of life that makes a uh, an enemy of christ so who are they they are in verse 19 it says whose god is in their belly and whose glory is in their shame okay and who set their mind on earthly things so the belly here uh, that Paul use is actually is a metaphor that suggests far more than mere glue to me it covers all that belong to the body and the flesh of humans but also for the satisfaction of the carnal nature but it covers even more than that because Paul uses the word flesh uh, the Greek word for the, uh, the, the, the word that he uses is sarx yeah, to denote our old self, yeah, from which we have been rescued into the humanity of Christ. So in other words, this is the natural man. We're all familiar about the natural man or the carnal man, okay? the sinful nature. Okay? Remember, uh, Paul addressed this letter to the people within the church. And unfortunately, that time, there are those um, people who are faith, whose faith is destruction. Because they turn their freedom into a perverted liberty. Yet their primary interest is all about themselves. Self-serving, self-seeking, self-justifying. And this is still happening in our church, churches, uh, in the churches today. Yeah, there are still people that is just just that just have set their minds on earthly things. They they uh, they have selfish uh, agenda. Yeah, they self-serving agenda, self-seeking agenda, and self-justifying agenda. Okay. There are still that are living in an earthbound life. Okay. And refuse you know, to be open to the grace and transforming influence of Jesus. If you know that Jesus is going to transform you, yeah, so why would you reject it? It's because maybe your mind is still set not on the heavenly things, but on the earthly things. Your your agenda is not selfish. It's the selfish things that you're thinking about. So I believe that once we know that Christ is going to transform us, 
through his grace of course he will all accept so when you have that opportunity accept that do not refuse it by living uh, by putting in your minds on this earthly thing okay so that doesn't have to be the case okay Paul's compelling passion to know Christ and the power of his resurrection in this life has added confidence to the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus and he is the one who will complete his saving work by transforming us in verse 21 of Philippians 3 it says our lowly body um that it may be conformed to his glorious body so our Lord Jesus Christ will finish uh, saving work by transforming us. so let Jesus transform you from glory to glory daily okay, so that you will be a different person from or basically a different creation from the past okay, that you will become a new creation Jesus amen amen and in summary so um the first topic uh, of course the price of the high calling is what really matters remember the pattern the recognize who and where we are uh, leave the past behind have a goal and concentrate on the path so for the second topic uh, conduct consist um, consistent with commitment the level of our spirit spirituality okay should be in the same level as uh, the way we live every day yeah, it should be on the same level and the essential discipline of christian growth is learning say it's learning to say yes yeah in christ jesus in all aspects of our life and then so that we become a new creation so that we can be in the process of perfection and lastly judgment paul uses himsa as the example yeah he is pleading for the people to follow him not in his failures and his limitation not even in his achievements but in which really mat in what really matters yeah being laid hold of by Christ Jesus our faith is destruction if our minds are still set to earthly things let us be open yeah to the gracious and transforming influence of Jesus in our life amen amen So um for those who, who are here the first time if this is your first time here I want to offer you a free gift of salvation okay. there is nothing that you need to do all you, that you need to do is accept this free gift and as you accept this free gift this then becomes uh, you you start this new journey in and you'll be in the process as a new creation. So God is giving you a chance tonight so that you can be a new creation, creation in Jesus. So if you are willing to accept this free gift, I invite you to this prayer. Okay, let's close our eyes and follow me in this prayer. Dear heavenly Father, I come before you knowing that I have sinned and i have heard i humbly come to you knowing that i need a savior i believe that your son jesus christ came into this earth he lived he died and he rose again after three days heavenly father i ask that you come into my life Lord Jesus Christ I confess that you are my Lord and my savior and I pray tonight Father that as I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal savior you will transform my life help me to be able to live a life that is pleasing to you help me to be able to live as a new creation thank you father for this free gift of salvation pray this in the mighty name of jesus christ amen amen and amen so i believe that if you have um through faith if you have prayed that prayer 
and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior in your life, I believe that you are saved and that millions of angels are rejoicing tonight because you have said yes to that prayer. Amen. Uh, before anything, before we end, uh, I want to uh, pray for each one of us. So let us close our eyes and bow our heads tonight as we close in prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the topic that uh, we have discussed, Lord. Pray, Father, that whatever we have learned tonight, Lord God, especially we Christians, those who are have been Christians, Lord God, we will be able to apply this in our daily lives. Lord God. We will know what really matters about knowing who Jesus Christ, uh, Christ is. Uh, also about the price of the high calling of God and that our conduct consistent with our commitment and that we will take note of the judgment. Lord, we pray, O Lord, that um, continue to transform us from glory to glory as we depend on the power of your Holy Spirit, as we depend on the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that we will be able to live a peace in life. Lord, continue to put what really matters in our life, Lord, in our hearts and in our minds. Then, as we end tonight, Lord God, continue to bless us, continue to protect us, continue to shower us, Lord, with your love, with your grace, and with your blessing. Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord, for tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And I pray that uh, we'll be able to apply everything and um, what we have learned tonight in our daily lives. Amen. So we will say yes uh, to Christ Jesus in all the aspects of our lives. So good night and God bless. Bye.